floor. Everything changed. Just offshore from here, where the Indo-Australian plate subducts underneath the Eurasian plate, more than a thousand years of tectonic stress were released in a matter of seconds. The earthquake has a magnitude of 9.1, the third largest ever recorded. As the Eurasian plate thrusts upwards by 20 meters, it displaces billions of tons of water. The resulting wave traveled east towards Thailand and Indonesia and west towards India and Sri Lanka. And in the tsunami's path were millions of people. Peaking at 800 kilometers an hour, the tsunami will take 30 minutes to hit the Sumatran coast. Around an hour later, it will reach Thailand. Although they felt the earthquake, with no tsunami warning systems in place, people around the Indian Ocean coastline are oblivious to the approaching threat. I saw the buildings destroyed and we are scared, of course, but we didn't know it's tsunami, it's happened. For the holidaymakers in Thailand, the first hint of the impending disaster is the strange sight of the ocean disappearing. The bay was empty. All I could see was rocks all the way over to the Ox Club, all the way over to the other island. There was nothing there. One of the more enduring and dramatic images of the 2004 tsunami was the withdrawal of the water level from the shoreline, leaving the entire foreshore area exposed. This is a phenomenon known as drawdown, and it's caused by the tectonic displacements offshore. While one section of the plate is thrust upwards, the section of the plate closer to the coastline actually subsides, and the water rushing in to fill that void is what causes the withdrawal of the shoreline. Had more people realized that this was the sign of an impending tsunami, perhaps more lives would have been saved. This is the time people should have started running. But instead, the curious sight lures people onto the beach. It was bizarre, but it was fascinating. I think I did actually briefly go to the front of the house again and, and, and look and think about, you know, walking out. And I thought, no, that's just not right. It's just, it's wrong. Exactly how it's wrong, I don't know, but it's wrong. By the time many react, it's too late. Myself, my wife, and uh, my stepdaughter discussed our next move, and uh, we just didn't get to make it, basically. At 8.15 a.m., the tsunami hits northern Sumatra. The city of Banda Aceh, home to over a quarter of a million people, is about to suffer its full force. I'm here in the busy city center of Banda Aceh, and it was here on this street corner where some of the most graphic video footage of the tsunami was recorded. On the street behind me, the tsunami surge came flowing up the road, channeled between the buildings. Watching the footage, we see that the leading edge of the tsunami was actually slow enough that people could escape simply by running or walking. However, this part of Banda Aceh is very far from the ocean, and people simply didn't know what to do. As the flood depth increases, so too does the speed of the flow, until there's no way to escape unless you can get to high ground. That's what the person who shot this video did. He climbed up over here. And he lived. However, thousands of other people that day could not get to high ground, and they ended up dying in the waves. Crammed with billions of tons of debris, the wave is an unstoppable battering ram. Eddie Quenslow is one of the many that scramble to safety near the Grand Mosque. Materials come like the iron, the stone, the rocks, the bed, shirts, motorcycle, a car. You can see people uh, mixed with the water, everything material. The tsunami wave came right through here. 
These are very sturdy concrete buildings, and many of them weren't knocked over by the tsunami, but rather the water flowed through them, between them, and actually channelized the flow and made it speed up and get deeper in some areas. The water here didn't go past the, the first story. It was all pretty much less than about eight or 10 feet deep. So in terms of escaping, a lot of people could have gotten away just by getting up to the second story as the cameraman did at the corner. I was thinking I will die. And I saw many people need help, but I could not help because too many people need help. I saw many babies. Of course they need help. Sometimes I just take put on the top because I don't know where I have to bring them how I can bring them to where because all is a flood that means everywhere is water 30 minutes after the tsunami hits Banda Aceh it smashes into the Thai island of Phuket get inside, get inside. Steve Gill's beach bungalow is directly in its path I, I think our conversation ended when we heard the roar of the water. We still couldn't see the wave until we turned to look at the small alleyway between the two buildings. It was traveling at a speed estimated between two and three hundred miles an hour. And it was just... It was... The scene was obliterated by water. It was 30 foot high. And by that time, there was nothing we could do. Nothing. I remember being struck by the water. Realistically, there wasn't any expectation of ever coming out the other side. It was just, you know, is this the way it ends? Because the, the sheer power of what has hit you doesn't allow any space for an escape plan. There are no plans for the future. I was found in the stagnant uh, uh, wreckage, if you like, um, about a quarter of a mile up the road. Although he soon reunites with his stepdaughter, Steve is never to see his wife alive again. Over the next 20 minutes, three massive waves, up to 10 meters high, crash into the small resort. 1,000 tons of water smashing down on each meter of coastline. Beach after beach, wave after wave, the tsunami brings death and destruction. In Thailand, over 5,000 people perish, with another 3,000 missing. In Indonesia, the tsunami obliterates Banda Aceh. I could not imagine why like this I lose my best friend. I was thinking like, why God didn't take me, better he take me than my best friend. And uh, and also about my auntie also, we didn't find his bodies. My cousin, many my cousin passed away, we cannot find the bodies. In total, the waves strike 14 countries around the Indian Ocean taking lives as far away as Africa. The final death toll will make the 2004 tsunami the most lethal ever seen. A decade on, and the streets of Banda Aceh are as busy as ever. And lessons have been learnt. Buildings like this one have been constructed throughout the area to provide safe refuge should another killer wave strike. For Jose Barrero, they're a powerful reminder of why he regards this disaster as one of the worst ever. The combination of the exceptionally large earthquake 
and the tsunami which caused such a devastating human toll over so many countries makes the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami one of the top 10 natural disasters in human history. 